Well, here it's the middle of the night, as far as the snakes are concerned. And I'm shooting an infrared. I came in and uh, see if they were having a party or something. Actually, I came in to feed some snakes that prefer to, to feed this time of night. And there's our rhino vipers. It's cool that you can get some eye shine out of them with the uh, infrared. I bet they're probably a little freaked out because I don't normally uh, do this. There's our friendly neighborhood nose horn. Viper, Viper Amidites. And there's our uh, death adder. And there's our resident Prego death adder. And here's a Russell's Viper. And there's our phone ringing. Hold on. Okay, that was actually a very uh, important call that I took. It uh, is a vet that just moved into my area who is uh, actually a very experienced uh, uh, reptile vet. Worked uh, with not only Hey, you Tubby, uh, no you didn't, I thought uh, Tubby there, uh, Job of the Hut Shed. Um, he worked uh, with Elliot Jacobson, who is one of the premier uh, snake pathologists uh, in the world. Uh, certainly with uh, uh, identifying uh, Ophidian paramyxovirus. Is that a baby? No, that's a shedding. I'm uh, in the wrong cage. It's a little tough to tell where you're doing in here uh, in the dark. But uh, as I was saying, uh, say hello. Boy, these are uh, these are uh, infrared uh, transparent, which means that the pit vipers will definitely pick up on this. Uh, let's see what our friends, the uh, <laughs> the common landsheds, are like. Oh boy, look at that. Look at you, you little moron. Uh, any rate, uh, this vet is uh, is going to see uh, my adult male bitus parviocula, who has a mouth infection. Uh, but the overall importance and ramifications of this is that uh, for those people up here in the Northeast in Pennsylvania. Uh, we now have a real uh, vet willing to take care of our animals for us, which is a uh, uh, a very very important thing. You know, it's 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 very difficult for us to uh, take care of the animals that we really care for, um, especially when sick. Here's a parviocula. Let's uh, see, there's the nausea, nausea. Boy, these guys dirty my glass. Yeah. Look at that. Let's see what the king is up to. Hello, king. Ooh, play tag with the king in the dark. That would be no good. At uh, any rate, uh, uh, more information as it becomes available, uh, and uh, that would be a great thing. Ah, hello, girly. You ready for something to eat, huh? Yeah, I bet you are. Ooh. You know, as comfortable as I am with these animals, uh, it's a little bit spooky here in the dark, uh, especially when you're feeding. Ah, I thought one got away. Ah, 
eye, you can see her little tongue going. This is my Bitis quinalis, the uh, Black Widow. And uh, she has a house guest right now, so we'll leave it uh, at this point because we don't need to televise any of this. Look at that! That's very cool. That's the Malayan Pit Viper uh, up on the upper ledge. You know, during the day, you never see a move from the corner, but at night, uh, uh, he's out and about. Here we are. Look at that. Look at that. I have to take her, him out on the bench and show you him. He's just a stunner. That male Echis coloratus is totally weirded out by me being here in the dark. He's actually whacked the female twice now. That's rude. That's very rude. Hello, Mr. Brown. Hello, Mr. Brown. Hey. Whoa, you're a wacky thing. Oh, good job. It's a very wacky snake. Boy, if that's a male, uh, male rat. Don't you have any, uh, any respect for your male brethren? You got right by the uh, groin there, buddy. Okay, Mr. Brown. I gotta secure your cage, so you need to go inside and eat. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> He's funny. He's like a dog. He carries it off. Hello. Alright. Have fun. Mr. Brown, what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Huh? Now behave yourself. Behave yourself. Mr. Brown's tail. I knew. Them's fighting words. <laughs> it's one incredibly fast snake. As he latches onto my nose. Oh, Mr. Brown! Oh! Yeah, if he sees anything pink and wiggly, like my fingertip on, on the door sill, he's like over here in a heartbeat. Ooh! Yeah. Ooh! Mr. Brown! Maybe you would like some chicks. Is that what you'd like? You'd like some chicks? And here's Mr. Brown. That wild and crazy lipid. Hey bud, over here. Hey. Hey. Hello. Mr. Brown. There, you got the idea. Oof. Mr. Brown, you're a vicious monster. You're a vicious monster there, bud. Giant sandworm. Well, hi, Mr. Brown. That didn't take you long to make an appearance tonight. You got it? Well, maybe I don't want to let you have it. You ever think of that, huh? Having a tug of war with Mr. Brown. All right, all right, there you go. But you're still not going to let me do Mr. Brown cam. Darn. 
Well, Mr. Brown is on high alert. Here, Mr. Brown. Man, talk about locking on target. Incredibly fast and accurate strikers. They can be spazzo, but for the most part, he's pretty good, aren't you, Mr. Brown? You're getting pretty used to me uh, being up fairly close, huh? Is that tasty? Yeah, rats are on the menu tonight. Well, enjoy. Tonight, Mr. Brown is dining on an appetizer of uh, frozen thawed house gecko, and I got some uh, some babies in over the past couple of days that require uh, only the tails of the geckos because that's all they can consume at one time. So, Mr. Brown really likes geckos, and you can see he's really chewing that guy up. So, Mr. Brown is privileged enough to have uh, geckos as, I guess I would call it, a, uh, an appetizer or uh, an enhancement. Oh, look at that, Mr. Brown. Go bud, okay. I just hate when I get lizards caught in my mouth, right Mr. Brown? Oh, there you go Mr. Brown, you got it now. You got it now, no problem. Mr. Gecko is destined for the stomach. Go Brown. Oh, look at that. Oh, was that tasty? Huh? Would you like another? Huh? Oh, you gonna wipe your face. Here. Here. Oh, that's so good. Look at that. Oh, Mr. Brown, you're doing so well. Mr. Brown, as you can see, just shed. So he has lots of shedding debris. Yeah, okay. I was just helping you there. Uh, lying around the cage. And oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown's going to want more. So I am going to retreat now uh, before he decides that he wants more. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Brown, it's day shift time. Sudacus are diurnal, which means that they're out and active during the day. Ooh, ooh, here's Mr. Brown. I can't help but try to touch his tail. Ha ha ha! I got your tail. One of these days he'll get me though. Hello. Hello. Now this is trouble. Mr. Brown sniffing around the door. Oh, oh, oh. I want a finger. Okay, calm down. Uh, I really wasn't going to feed him uh, mice tonight because I was going to give him chicks tomorrow, but he uh, he's taking a... Hey, hey, hey. No for an answer. Get over here, you toad. Don't you dare try to take advantage of a situation and I'm being nice to you, bud. Got it? Okay. This is the uh, very large Trimosaurus panisius, the uh, flat-nosed pit viper from Asia. He's the one that arrived with a very bad uh, fang infection. Uh, that whole uh, fang sheath was uh, screwed up. Well, he's been uh, successfully eating uh, live hoppers. Uh, I've been able... He's wanted to kill me more than eat. Uh, so, he's he wouldn't take uh, dead stuff, but he would take uh, live stuff. 
So I threw this live guy in there, and notice I'm not showing uh, any of the real nasty part. It just looks like a, a typical mouse that I feed. Uh, with the exception, it went about 20 minutes like some friggin' prize fr uh, fight on World uh, Wrestling Federation or something. Uh, for some reason, uh, either he didn't inject or didn't use his fangs or something, but he and the mouse were really having a round and round. It was in his mouth all this time, but, you know, he was thrashing around, banging his head against the, the wall of the container. The mouse was biting him in some spots and stuff, and, uh, you know, came to the point where it's like, this is not good for neither the snake nor the mouse. Uh, subsequently, uh, I have to intervene. And uh, I removed the, the mouse. Uh, as soon as I popped the lid on the container, uh, he opened his mouth and released the mouse. And the mouse was running around uh, the bottom of the cage all slimed. Uh, so what I did was I uh, used the cage shield and kept him on one side and grabbed the mouse by the tail and then uh, promptly... Uh, dislocated its uh, its cervical vertebrae and and dispatched it uh, quite quickly and humanely and then uh, with a pair of forceps plopped it back in his mouth uh, and you see the results of that you know that's you know it's just another reason why I don't like feeding anything live uh, simply because it uh, Oh, it's a nightmare. You you guys, you know, you guys have no idea. You know, the uh, Jameson Mambas are particularly bad. Um, because, you know, they, uh, they chase the mouse around. Sometimes they don't eat the mice. And then, how do I get the mouse out of the cage uh, with the mouse running from anything that comes close? and two Jameson Mambas trying to escape and or bite me at the same time. Uh, this is why, you know, I prefer to feed frozen thawed food. It's lying there dead in the front of the cage. Uh, so if it is not eating, all I have to do is reach in with a pair of forceps and remove it. I don't have to play catch the happy mouse, uh, you know, all through the... Uh, uh, the cage, dodging strikes, dodging, you know, venomous projectiles as they try to leave the cage. And believe me, you know, you guys haven't seen it. With the Jamesons, it's a nightmare. I've had them shoot out of the cage, clear halfway, you know, across the room, zooming past my hands and my shoulders and stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's a nightmare. And to say... You know, oh God, well, you got to feed live because the snake really needs this. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry. The snake doesn't really need it. Uh, I don't think there's too much nutrition left uh, lost by the, the killing and the freezing part. Uh, subsequently, uh, I discount that. And, you know, certainly you can, you can supplement uh, in the fact that I feed animals a uh, number of different prey species, if they'll take that, I think it replaces it. Uh, mothers who have just recently given birth or laid eggs, I replenish by giving them pre-killed. Uh, so if they don't eat it, I don't have to hunt it down. Uh, they get the full nutritional value because all I did was I, I, you know, I dislocated its neck and, and uh, disconnected its brain from the rest of the body. Uh, at least electronically down the spinal cord so you know I tell you people you know feeding live is a nightmare and if you have a collection as large as mine or even you know a lot of zoos and, and other collectors it'll drive you freaking nuts a matter of fact it'll drive you nuts until the point where it kills you uh, do you have a uh, oh you do have a problem hi there how are you He's a friendly looking chap, huh? Boy, does he have some big chompers on him. Uh, you're winding up for the pitch. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here, yeah, let me back off. So the pitch is in focus. 
I know you see it. I know you see that camera. Whoa, you're a little low. See this uh, plastic is, uh, oh, I'm not going to do that because you'll bite me. The plastic is, uh, is infrared uh, clear so he can not only track my arm uh, but he can uh, heat sink on it and I'm not getting near those holes. Okay bud, just relax. You had a nice meal. Do you want to drink a water? Huh? Yeah, well I gotta go get the water because the water is over there. So um, I have to put the lid on the cage and this tape is, uh, is finished so uh, I am going to uh, uh, move on. So this is the, again, this is the uh, flat-nosed uh, pit viper from Southeast Asia, Trimasaurus panisius. And someday I'll learn how to spell panisius.